How's it going guys? Topic for today's video is can you gain some fat on a high carb, low fat plant-based diet? Can you gain some fat? Can you get fat on it? Um, there seems to be a lot of um, kind of conflicting information out there. You know, people are saying, well, you can't get fat. Um, then there's a lot of anecdotal evidence of people really getting fat. And there seems to be, I would say, a lot of misinformation and a lot of claims that really aren't necessarily scientifically backed. So in this video, um, basically, I'm not going to really, really be doing that much of the talking during this video. Um, I've got some video clips um, from a couple of other YouTube channels who have done interviews with T. Colin Campbell and also Dr. Gregor. So that, they're going to be doing most of the talking. Now, just as a preface, I used to believe that it was just entirely impossible to get, uh, to get fat eating a high-carbohydrate diet. Now, I started watching Harley's uh, Durian Riders videos like four years ago. So I actually started watching his videos when he only had like th 300 videos on YouTube. So this is going back a long time. So back in the day, I was probably one of the biggest Durian Rider fanboys. And just over time, as I've talked to more people, uh, I've really kind of like really changed my opinion on the can carbs make you fat discussion because the more and more people that I talk to, and it's specifically girls that I talk to, I'll be like, I'll be like, or they'll say to me, they'll be like, oh yeah, like I gained like 15 pounds eating over 2,500 calories per day. And, I'll, and I'm like, I'm like, that's impossible. You can't, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It's impossible. And they'll, uh, they'll be like, well, yeah, no, it happened. And, and then the first question that I respond with is I'll be like, well, you must have had an eating disorder, right? And they're like, well, yeah, I kind of did. And then I was like, case closed, right? That's why they gained all the weight because they had an eating disorder. Now in this video, we're going to kind of uh, dispel um, quite a few of those myths. So let's get started. What are your thoughts on uh, calories in and out in general, as far as uh, weight loss is concerned? I am a, I'm a believer in the laws of thermodynamics. Um, yeah, no, so look, people's metabolism are different. Uh, people's uh, activity levels are different, even just fidgeting. Some people just sit at a chair, other people, you know, they're always fidgeting. That actually can burn a lot of calories throughout the day. So some people need a lot more calories than others. But look, if you uh, lock someone in a room and you don't let them eat enough, they will lose weight, period. You know, and if you stuff them full of a lot of food, doesn't matter what they do, they'll gain a lot of weight. You can't outrun your mouth, essentially. So basically what Dr. Greger is saying that you can, you can gain weight. Like obviously if you eat too much food, then you're going to be gaining weight. If you don't eat enough food, then you're actually going to be losing weight. In the, like in the high carb um, area, there's also some belief that, you know, some people will say it's, you, that you can eat unlimited amounts or that the carbs don't really turn into fat and that type of thing. That's why, and some of them are recommending like quite a high calorie intake, like 3,000 or more, um, because they think that, you know, they're saying that the carbs aren't really uh, in the plant food world, in the high carb world, that you, that the, that you wouldn't gain weight in that. But um, that's, that's partly part of the question uh, or the reasoning for that. Um, and also, so what's your take on that general, you know, the thermal gen genesis? If you overeat, carbs, when, when I mean overeat, exceed your kind of daily caloric intake in carbs, you will build fat in the worst possible place, and that's in your liver. And so there actually, is, I mean, so this phenomenon which carbs turn into fat happens, and it happens in your liver, and you can run into liver inflammation. So if you just drank soda all day, um, and you'd have to drink a lot of soda, but I mean, you could exceed your caloric intake, and you would your liver. You give that give yourself a week, and uh, drink a couple liters of coke every day, and your um, uh, liver function, your liver function test, which is a measure of liver enzymes spilling out your bloodstream because of the inflammation and cells dying in your liver. Um, uh, you know, and you can do ultrasound. You actually see the extra grams of fat that are building up in your liver. Um, so that's one of the reasons why industrial sugars, high fructose corn syrup and table sugar, um, are bad for us in excess is because of the liver toxicity. And part of that 
is actually the formation of fat in your liver. Which is something that you don't want to be doing. That is not, not good at all. Not good at all. Lots of inflammation. Not good. Let's let Dr. Gregor continue. But uh, like in a healthier way, if, if people are eating, say they're doing like large smoothies with dates and they're, they can actually get quite a high calorie intake or uh, even a starch uh, based diet. And it's a healthy, you know, fruit and complex carbs. Do you know how many potatoes you would have to eat to, I mean, to, to, to get a few thousand calories in? I mean, there's only a certain amount of stomach volume. I mean, the wonderful thing about whole plant foods is that they're so calorically dilute. I mean, if you look at a, um, a plate of 100 calories of broccoli, 100 calories of strawberries, you compare that to 100 calories of cheese or chicken or chocolate for that matter, you can see how you can eat a tablespoon of oil, get 100 calories, and you wouldn't even notice the difference, right? I mean, you, you have an oily taste in your mouth, but you wouldn't feel any fuller. Um, whereas you ate 100 calories of broccoli, all right, now you're, ooh, all right? Um, uh, you know, that's a big bowl of strawberries. And so there's only a certain amount of food you, you could stuff in. And so, I mean, that's the nice thing about eating whole food, plant-based diets. You don't have to worry about carb counting, calorie counting, portion control, any of that. In fact, I don't even have to worry about nutrients. Am I getting enough zinc or am I getting enough iron? If you're eating a variety of whole plant foods, all that's going to be taken care of with the exception of B12. So to me, this type of nutritional um, advice when you see people, when you see guys like pour bags of sugar into their smoothies or into uh, bowls of cereal, to me, it doesn't really, doesn't really kind of seem like sound nutritional advice. That's just my opinion. That's just Dr. Greger's opinion. You're welcome to form your own. So just to reiterate, he's promoting whole plant-based foods. So that doesn't include refined sugar. And as well as like I just mentioned earlier, smoothies as well is not necessarily an entire whole plant-based food. You have to think of the blending process. You're literally processing the food, smashing the food a thousand times with a metal blade. And to me, that's not really a whole plant-based food. I could literally take 15 bananas, put it in a smoothie jug, blend it up with some water, drink it down really quickly. But if I were to actually sit down and eat those 15 bananas, like actually peel them and eat them, I don't think that I'd be able to eat 15 uh, bananas. It would take me, it would take me a lot longer to do it. If I actually sat down and worked at it, like maybe I could eat six or seven or eight maybe, but I definitely don't think that I would be able to eat 15 because you're basically processing the food when you're blending it. And it's no longer a whole food anymore. You're processing it. So, if, if, you know, I, I can't see what people are eating, but if they say that they're eating like a whole food, plant-based diet, is there anything at that level? Like, um, Yeah. Oh, uh, all right. So if someone really is, so I ask people to give me a dietary record. So I'd say, okay, everything goes in your mouth, including water. Anything goes in your mouth, I want to know, right? Um, and, and, you know, and, and oftentimes people think, oh, yeah, you know, totally whole food, plant-based diet, and I, you know, but, but it turns out, you know, they're pouring olive oil, all over everything or something, whatever. And it's just like, well, you know, that's not like a whole food, right? Like the oil doesn't grow on trees. Anyway, so, so typically it comes out of just a misunderstanding. Um, uh, in fact, I don't think I've ever had someone who actually was eating a whole food plant-based diet that, that couldn't arrive at that. So typically there's a little bit of a misunderstanding in the high carb communities thinking that, all these smoothies, um, all this white refined rice, um, all of these uh, refined carbohydrates in the form of sugar that people kind of maybe think that they're whole foods and that they're not going to get fat on them. But he's basically saying that there seems to be a little bit of a misunderstanding saying that the much the same way that somebody thinks that maybe olive oil is a whole food when it actually isn't, people might think that consuming endless number of uh, calories from smoothies or refined sugar or anything like that, saying that, you know, this is a whole, these are whole foods when they're actually not. So basically what Dr. Greger is saying is that it's, he doesn't even come across people that can't lose weight because when he's actually prescribing nutritional information to people, he says whole foods, right? So whole foods, no processed foods, no refined foods. Don't be pouring sugar in your smoothies. Don't be blending up all of your food. We're going to be talking about smoothies in this one right here. You know, look, it's possible. I mean, there are calorically dense foods. 
dried fruit, nuts and seeds, avocados, smoothies. Actually, liquid calories aren't registered the same way by your body because we weren't meant to basically drink our calories, right? Because they didn't really, calories didn't really exist in liquid form. So Dr. Greger here is saying that calories don't exist in liquid form in nature. They don't really exist in liquid form in nature. So our bodies are not designed to be consuming liquid calories because it doesn't trigger our body in the same way as if we're actually eating the food just as it is, right? And so it kind of bypasses, that's why we think drinking soda is worse than eating candy, even if you had the same amount of sugar, because like you're just getting all these calories into your system before your body can be like, whoa, wait a second, wait, we just had 200 calories, well, what? You know, it's kind of too late to shut off your appetite, you know, suppress your appetite. Um, so, um, you know, so theoretically, um, right, so if you're right, you ate lots of smoothies, lots of really calorically dense foods, and you ate all day, and you had little activity, you can, you can, you can balloon up to any size you want. I mean, you could gain as much weight as you wanted to gain, um, but I think you just have to put some work into it. And so if someone was in that situation, I would encourage them to move towards less calorically dense whole foods. Again, this is not something I think is common, but... So basically what Dr. Greger is saying, if you're having troubles losing weight, um, eating a high-carb plant-based diet, move to more calorically dilute foods as opposed to more calorically dense foods. So this kind of ties into the whole thermodynamics thing, which is like chemistry, right? So this is like science. So what Dr. Greger said earlier was that, you know, calories in, calories out. So this is, um, this is really interesting because a lot of people will say, I eat an unlimited number of calories, which, means, which might mean they're eating uh, 3,000 or 3,500 calories or something like that, right? Like just a really high number. And they're like, well, I, I lost weight eating this amount of food. Or I lost, or I just maintain my weight. Like I'm not gaining any weight. So basically, when they say this, like this is chemistry. This is basic chemistry. So if you're eating 3,000 calories, that also means, and say you don't gain any weight, you don't gain any fat. That means that your body is also burning 3,000 calories. Now, say if you're eating 3,000 calories and losing weight, that means that your body is actually running a caloric deficit. It has to be. So even if you're eating 4,000 calories per day and your body's burning 4,500 calories per day, that's a caloric deficit and you're actually going to lose weight. Now, I'm not promoting calorie restriction in any type of way. It's just saying that your body, if you're giving it the proper food, whole plant-based foods, then naturally your body is probably just going to actually burn more calories than you're ingesting because your body wants to get to a healthy body weight. And this is what all the plant-based doctors see is that when people move to this healthy plant-based diet, they just lose weight naturally. Now you might be thinking, well, you know what, I don't, I'm not, I'm a little skeptical, you know, maybe people are gaining the weight because of metabolic damage, which is something that I've actually only heard in this community, right? In the high carb uh, plant-based community. It's metabolic damage. The reason why you gain weight is because in the past, you've restricted calories. And so now, since you're eating, um, basically enough calories, that means that you are basically packing on the weight because your body used to be in a starvation mode, and now it's just gonna pack on weight. And that's why so many people are gaining like 30 or 40 pounds. So this is uh, T. Colin Campbell who wrote The China Study, which is kind of like a popular book in the plant-based community. I'm just gonna let him um, talk about that. Like, um, I guess maybe a better way to put it is I hear some people talking about their body going into uh, starvation mode. Like they, they, hoard ca they hoard these calories after they've been starving and they store it as fat because their body thinks that it's in a famine. And that's why they put on a lot of weight after people have um, eating disorders or come from low calorie or low carb diets. Or do you just think that's the way that your body metabolizes the different kinds of foods that you're eating once you're eating more? No, that's uh, actually, I, I, those kind of claims are really quite superficial, mm -hmm. uh, they're quite imaginary. I'm not saying this, T. Colin Campbell, the author of the China study and the book Whole is saying this. Yeah. Uh, and they, 
frequently uh, considered and talked about by people who have very little or no training in this area. Mm -hmm. It's just a popular thing. You know, they might want to say is I just don't, again, I can't, I, I'd have to know more what they're exactly talking about. Not you, you mentioned some things, but that's, that's all speculative. So it's imaginary and it's speculative. So have you heard of Freely and Durian Rider? They're very popular on YouTube and Instagram, but if not, I can just explain. You explain. Okay, they, um, they talk a lot about people that come from eating disorders or low-calorie diets, like fad diets, and that they have metabolic damage or they put their body into starvation mode, and that when they start eating a high-carb, whole foods, plant-based diet, that they pack on all this weight because... Um, they've damaged their metabolism and now their body is just storing all this fat to compensate for having not ate enough before. I think that's hokey. Hokey. I'm not saying this. Colin Campbell is saying this. I, don't, I, I really don't think there's any basis for that claim whatsoever because uh, we have done, and when I say we, I'm talking about uh, two sons, in fact, uh, one who's the director of the film, and the other who's a physician, mm -hmm. you know, the one that co-authored the book with me, uh, as well as other colleagues. And uh, what we see, I mean, it's really remarkable. I did not in fact expect to see what we are seeing. And that, that is, people who are on an Atkins diet or these other crazy kind of diets, you know, when they go on a whole food plant-based diet, their problems resolve so fast and so well. They lose weight. They don't gain weight. So even if you're coming from a history of crazy fat diets, um, where you've restricted calories in the past, that doesn't mean that you should gain weight. Like Colin, he's saying this right here. You like you should just lose weight. They don't all of a sudden gain weight, you know, from being on a bad, bad diet. And, and uh, the whole the high carbohydrate diet means high natural carbohydrates. Yeah, I'm talking about you know refined carbohydrates. Refined carbohydrates, which could mean blending processing fruit into smoothies, as well as pouring sugar, all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about the carbohydrates that are obviously present in whole plant-based foods. Yeah, like fruits and starches. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I, I don't believe that, what you just said, that other thing you're talking about. So T. Colin Campbell basically saying metabolic d damage doesn't really exist. Um, if you're moving to a high-carb plant-based diet, you shouldn't be gaining weight. Um, granted that you're actually eating Whole Foods, which we uh, which we were talking about, you know, all these blended smoothies, all these refined carbohydrates, not Whole Foods, and can make you gain weight. Now, with the Rod to Whenever movement, Hannah and I we talk about intuitive intuitive eating. So, intuitive eating is just kind of like a fancy word for eating. So, basically, what that means is when you're hungry, you eat. When you're not hungry anymore, or when you're full. That's when you stop eating. Now, Durian Rider has labeled this as an eating disorder. That's really kind of confusing because it just doesn't make any sense to anybody, including T. Hall and Campbell. Um, I guess like a question that piggybacks off of this is, what do you think of intuitive eating versus eating to hit a certain calorie number? Forget the calorie question. When you're eating a whole food fat, it's not about calories, except in extreme conditions. I mean, you know, obviously, you can you know, really pick out on the right kind of diet. If you keep on doing that every day and you don't exercise, yes, it could be a weight problem possibly. But basically, when one is eating a whole food fat based diet, fruits, vegetables, grains, legumes, uh, weight comes off for virtually everyone. So for virtually everybody, they should be losing weight. But hundreds, if not thousands of girls are gaining weight on the minimum 2,500 or 3,000 calorie um, uh, caloric recommendation. And uh, you don't need to count calories. The body regulates how to, what percent of the calories to actually digest and use. And uh, you know, that's, it's, it's a different way of thinking. The calorie question is an old story. I mean, like, do you think that you should be hitting a certain minimum every day to ensure that you're getting enough or just eat till you're full? Oh, just eat till you're full. 
in Asia and the countries where they tend to do more of the plant-based kind of thing uh, than we in the West have done, in those situations, there's a popular sort of view amongst the common people that they should eat until they're 80% full. It's kind of interesting. Um, but the fact of the matter is, when people consume a whole food plant-based diet, they feel faster. You know, in other words, their hunger sort of dissipates. They don't necessarily be hungry. Uh, and they, the body fills up with lower density, lower calorie-dense foods. And so, you know, they, they just feel naturally. They don't feel stuck when they're done eating. Because uh, there's like a lot of people in, have you heard of raw till four? It just means eating um, two raw meals a day, like fruits. And then the last meal is like a starch. And yeah. they, they recommend like eating like 3,000 calories. And if you're not eating 3,000 calories and you're doing it wrong and like stuffing yourself and a lot of people complain about gaining weight and... I personally think it's because people are eating past like satiate, sati sati satiation, sorry, and uh, it's not really to do about the calories. It's that people aren't listening to their bodies. Would you agree? Yes, actually, on that point, I generally do. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing about this whole idea that is really pretty remarkable. There, there's something. Europe now. Uh, no, the, uh, the you know the thing that we don't. I mean, I've been in this research field for 59 years, to be honest, about a long, long time. And I know what the typical uh, views of professionals were during that period of time. And it's a little bit hard to get them to think differently at times. But what we have forgotten in this field of nutritional science is the whole issue concerning our extraordinary ability of our, of our bodies, you know, to do what is best for us. All we have to do is just eat the right food in general. Don't get too caught up in all the details. Now, just eat this kind of food, and the body sorts things out. How much to digest, how much to absorb, how much is this way, how much is that way. I mean, it's, it's complexity beyond comprehension. We'll never know all the, all the you know, that kind of, uh, those relationships. But we know enough to know what to eat. And, and so as long as you're... You know, some days you eat a little less, some days more. We all know that, but you don't even pay attention to it, really. Uh, just eat that kind of food. Enjoy it. You know, get on to that kind of taste. It's really good. So the the message that you're leaving is that if you want to eat, like, 3,000 calories because you're hungry for it, that's different than stuffing your face to eat a certain calorie number because you have to. Exactly. You said it exactly right. You eat while you're hungry. You quit when you're not hungry. Yeah. Period. That's the end of the story. So this is coming from T. Colin Campbell. So basically, what we promote, intuitive eating, is also promoted by all the plant-based doctors. They all say the exact same thing. Eat when you're hungry, and then when you're full, that's, that's when you're done. Like, it's, it's so simple. But when people make false claims saying that it's an eating disorder, when it's actually just a normal way of eating, then there's obviously a lot of uh, there's a lot of confusion out there for sure. Now with all that kind of like science talk, let's get into basically some of the anecdotal evidence. So there's a lot of evidence. Um, Hannah and I on the Rod to Whenever Facebook group, as well as on YouTube videos and on Tumblr as well, is we just get a lot of comments from people who've gained weight. A lot of people. This is only a small snippet of what we have. First one: I gained eight pounds. And that was enough for me. So that's only only eight pounds. That's not very much. Great video, Hannah. I gained 12 pounds in a few weeks doing raw till four. Now I am down 14 pounds on the Tani Raw Sal diet. We are all different. Congrats on your weight loss and speaking against the insanity of eating 2,500 plus calories from carbs and no fat. Crazy how many of us have gained weight. I gained 25 pounds while training for a marathon. I hope this way helps. I have packed on about 30 pounds on raw till four too. It's time for something different, since that is obviously not working. Thanks for the ad. I started off on a raw till four vegan diet about a year ago and gave up, not the vegan part, obviously, after packing on a little over 30 pounds. It's time for a change. I put on over 40 pounds on raw till four. So not doing that now, thanks to Hannah. Who wants to wait six years to fix your metabolism and lose weight? 
You will inspire so many people with this video and I hope that they can see through the BS of other diets that have not worked for them. Bot till four is a bullshit. I went from being five foot seven, 125 pounds of five seven, 182 pounds in 14 months I came to Rotel 4 not to lose weight, but because Freely's videos about animal rights opened my eyes to veganism, but I should have chosen a more, chosen a more balanced vegan diet instead. I've been naturally skinny my whole life, eating whatever I wanted, including junk food. I've never been on a diet or calorie restricted, so my metabolism is not damaged. I actually went to my doctor and got my thyroid checked, and it's functioning perfectly. And I told him about Rotel 4 and the meta and metabolic damage and he laughed at me for being so naive to fall for such a scam. I'm sorry but I think I'll trust a doctor before I trust freely. He says there is no possible for, way for me to gain so much weight and be healthy because with dramatic weight gain comes a host of obesity related health issues. So I'm literally putting my life in danger doing this bullshit diet. The only thing lighter on me is my wallet from wasting so much money on way too much expensive fruit. This is seriously fucking bullshit. My body is covered in stretch marks now. I have them on my belly, inner arms, inner thighs, and above my butt. They're, fuck they're fucking disgusting. Even when I get back to 125 pounds, my body will be fucking ruined. I gained 25 pounds over the course of 10 months on raw until f uh, raw, raw till 4. I'm a fitness professional and I was teaching 15 plus classes per week plus my personal workouts. I followed the diet to the letter and still gained weight. I started watching your videos and eating more starches about 4 months ago and I've, last, and I've lost 15 pounds and still losing. I still eat plenty of fruit but about 70% starch and more fat. Okay, so I've saved the best one for last. So this one is like stuff that like really kind of like motivates us to, you know, kind of get our message out about just eating a simple plant-based diet, eating whole foods, and just eating until you're satiated, which is pretty logical, simple advice. All right. Hi, Hannah. I just found your channel. Maybe you can help me because I keep asking freely for help, but she keeps deleting my comments off her videos. This is a comment I posted on her last three videos and got deleted each time. I'm almost 17 years old. I've been vegan since before I was born. I do not have a history or a passive calorie restriction at all. In fact, I've always had a problem with overeating and I've been a chubby kid my whole life. I grew up eating uh, lots of fruits, veggies, beans, grains, and nuts and seeds. It wasn't the healthiest vegan diet since my mom uh, made a lot of veggie stir fry and used oil liberally in her cooking, but it was so much healthier than the standard American diet. I was easily eating more than 2,500 calories per day on average my whole life. I always ate huge portions and had several snacks throughout the day. Because of this, I was 148 pounds at 5'4 and only 15 years old. I discovered your channel almost two years ago and decided to give Raw Till 4 a try. Since I was already vegan, all I had to do was cut out the nuts, seeds, and oils from my diet. I've been Raw Till 4 since August 2013 and I have no cheat days at all. I've gained 56 pounds since then. Now I'm only 200, now I'm 204 pounds and my family and doctor are really worried about me. I have hypertension now and get out of breath really easily. I also have really unstable blood sugar levels. I get hypoglycemia if I go a few hours without eating and I've actually passed out twice because of this. My doctor told me I need to stop this diet as soon as possible or I'm going to get diabetes. My fasting blood sugar is high and my doc said it, my lab tests show I'm close to being diabetic. I've been doing this diet right. I have smoothies in the morning with at least eight bananas in them. I have fruits and salad for lunch with a fruit-based fat-free dressing. Then in the late afternoon, I have an early dinner which consists of either potatoes or sweet potatoes, at least a thousand calories worth. Then later in the evening at around nine, I like to have a nighttime snack that consists of a huge bowl of oatmeal and uh, with cinnamon and maple syrup. According to Chronometer, I eat 3,000 to 4,000 calories a day on average. Should I stop eating my nightly oatmeal? Is that the problem? I can't go on like this any longer. I feel disgustingly huge. I actually feel embarrassed to leave the house because I'm so fat. People make fun of me at school. And not only that, but I feel sick and tired all the time. I feel exhausted after every single meal and feel the need to take naps throughout the day. I can't even go up a flight of stairs without feeling like I need to pass out. I also had to quit my school soccer team after playing for 10 years. My brain is constantly foggy, and my grades in school have suffered a lot in these last two years. What can I do? This is ruining my life. So this is a lot of the evidence that we get, a lot of comments that we get from people who are struggling on a calorie recommendation that isn't really suited for their lifestyle or suited for their body. Like, everyone's body is, is different. Like, we all require a different number of calories based on 
a myriad of different factors. So are there people that, um, that do really well on the RADTO4 caloric recommendations? Yeah, obviously there are. But there's a vast amount of people, probably the majority of people, that are not getting very good results at all. They're gaining a lot of weight, um, they're having other health issues just from eating way too many calories, too many processed calories, carbohydrates, refined carbohydrates, um, all these smoothies and pouring sugar into their smoothies and et cetera, et cetera, that they're having all of these issues. So it's really interesting because Hannah and I just kind of promote what all the plant-based doctors promote. So just eating whole plant-based foods, eating until you're full. And that's the basis of what we promote because we want people to stay vegan. Because a lot of the people that are gaining a lot of weight, they're moving back to animal products. And we get comments like that as well, where people are like, I've gained all this weight, I'm, going back, I'm basically going back to animal products. And some of them actually do find Hannah's channel and they see that, oh, you know, she's lost 50 pounds just with logical, simple advice, right? So it just makes sense. It's just like you shouldn't be gaining weight eating a high-carb plant-based diet. You should not be gaining weight. You should only be losing weight. All the doctors agree with that. So if you are gaining weight, you might just want to maybe recalibrate your thinking a little bit. So, I mean, we have two amazing recipe books that you can pick up that are absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend it. I also recommend um, The Starch Solution, another great book by Dr. John McDougall. And, I mean, it really just comes down to just eating enough food for how much you need. And you just base that on your hunger. So when you're hungry, you eat till you're full. And that's it. And you're focused on whole plant-based foods. It's really, it's really kind of simple. And I'm going to be doing more videos talking about this type of stuff as well as, um, as well as improving your fitness as well because I think that's an important part that people don't really talk about enough uh, when they talk about weight loss. So you can definitely get down to a normal BMI. You can get down to like a normal weight. But if you want to be like, if you want to be pretty ripped, you want to have like a lot of tone on your body, then you're also going to have to include a lot of fitness as well. So anyways, guys, if you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them in the box below. Um, I know this was a long video, but there's a lot to cover. And uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Peace out.